Good evening, everybody. If uh, we can make our way to our seats to begin the service tonight. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are better together. Yes. We're better together. Yes, we are. I'm grateful for the body. I heard uh, something said the other day that the body cannot breathe without the lungs. The body cannot pump blood without the heart. Um, we have many different ministries in this place. We have many different things going on, and uh, we're better with the body. The body goes forward with the things that you can't even see. The body goes forward with the media team, with, with cleaning the church. Everything is equally important, and it's great. We're a blessed church, amen? amen. But uh, we're going to go into prayer tonight. Anybody on my right side? Taryn? Yes, sir. Brother Jeff. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Brother Josh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sister Scarlett. Okay, yes, ma'am, we will do that. Anybody else on this side? Here in the middle. Sister Eloise. Yes, ma'am. Sister Ann Margaret. Yes, ma'am. Amen. For sure, sure. Okay, yes, ma'am. Brother Derek. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Angel. Yep, we got you, ma'am. Anybody else in the middle here? My left side, Brother David. Definitely. Sister Maria. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yes, let's remember Trish. Sister Nadine. Yes, ma'am, we'll remember him. Okay, yes, ma'am. Yes. We can do that. Amen. Sister Lacey. Yes, for sure, for sure. All the way in the back. Yes, that's important. That's important. Uh, did I miss anybody else on this side? Platform, Brother Richard. Yes, sir. We can do that. Sister Kim. Definitely. Brother Larry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's remember them. Brother Tripp. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, as uh, Brother GL mentioned, uh, we want to remember 
sister Crystal's dad, David Long, he has a uh, big surgery tomorrow over an aneurysm, and uh, the Lord can move in that situation. Um, many things were mentioned tonight, but I, I know a, a God that is real. I know a God that still performs miracles, and I know the Word of God, and the Word of God is true, and those miracles can still happen today. Um, let's go to the Lord in faith tonight. Lord, you are wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For with God all things are possible. I lift up the name of Jesus tonight. Lord, you have uh, healed cancer before. You have healed disease before. You have parted seas before. You've made a way where there was no way. And I sing praises unto the Lord Most High. I lift up the name of Jesus and I speak healing into this congregation right now over every name that was mentioned i speak for healing and i pray that virtue would flow lord in the name of jesus i pray over every doctor that is going to be used in these situations impart knowledge impart wisdom over every decision that they have to make over every procedure over every medicine that has to be uh prescripted lord i pray that in the name of jesus your hand is upon us lord you are protecting our minds i pray that we are not deceived that we're not deceived by the flesh or the enemy or anything else but lord that we keep our eyes and our focus on the above because lord you can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or even think, Lord. I'm grateful for what you're doing in this place. I'm grateful for the miracles that have happened before. And I'm believing for them tonight. I'm believing in faith that situations are going to turn around tonight. Breakthroughs are going to happen. Healings will happen. Uh, uh, depression will be gone. Anxiety will be gone. But it's done in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. You're trying to fill the same old holes inside. There's a better. If you receive it. 
He is worthy. Amen. He makes a way. He's a chain breaker. He is good. He is good. Hallelujah. It's so good to feel the presence of the Lord in this place tonight. We're blessed because of that. He is good. Uh, the Bible says, In this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Whatever you've walked in with tonight, whatever trial, whatever tribulation, he's overcome it. He's above it. Amen. We're going to get a, if we can get our ways to give on the board tonight. We have GiveLify, PayPal, available at RiverbendPentecostals.com. Cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477. New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. Um, the gold, or gold pans are for tithing. Wood is for offering. And you can text to give at 833-883-9311. That's almost a tongue twister a little bit. Come on, somebody. But um, the Lord is faithful through this. Our faith has increased through this. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If we can get the prayer on the board. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. And the church said, Oh 
nobody beside you. There will never be anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you. There has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you. There will never be anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you. There has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you. There will never be anyone, anything like you. Nobody. On, the battle is over. Why don't you just lift them up in this place tonight? The battle is over. Why don't you lift up the name of Jesus and let that depression be gone? Lift up the name of Jesus. Let the walls come down. Hello. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh God, sing praises unto the Lord most high tonight. Come on, healing can be in this place right now. Your situation can be touched right now. Nobody beside him. There is no equal. He is the Alpha, the Omega. Oh, you are wonderful, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is surely in here tonight. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Um, if we can get Children's Church to come to the front. And River Bend ignited right after them. We're going to pray for them tonight. So we're going to pray tonight. We're going to intercede for the youth tonight. They need it. They need it. And there's something specific. There's something that I want to specifically pray for over them tonight. 
I want us to pray that they will know who they are in the Lord. That's important. John the Baptist knew who he was. He knew he was there to prepare the way for Jesus. Jesus knew who he was. He knew he was supposed to be about his father's business. And tonight, I want to pray over these youth that nothing will deceive them. No matter what they see on social media, no matter what they hear in the music, no matter what may be thrown at them, let them not lose who they are in the Lord. If you would, I, I ask you to just stretch your hand out in faith over, these youth, over the youth tonight and believe the Lord is going to move on them. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now, I pray the blood and the shield of faith over their minds. Lord, I pray that nothing they come in contact with, nothing they see, no conversation, nothing that comes into their ears can get them distracted off of you that will uh, cause them to lose or, or run away for what you have for them. But in the name of Jesus, I pray that they know who they are in you, Lord. And that, that wherever they go, you are ordering their steps, Lord. You are putting things in their path to push them into a dependency upon you, Lord. You are worthy of the praise, Lord, and you are worthy of the honor. Lord, you are doing a good work. You are doing a good work in here, Lord. And I pray that it would continue through the youth tonight. We lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sister Violet, if you want to lead them all back. And Emily right after. And y'all can be seated. We're going to hand it over to Brother GL. It's going to be a mighty, mighty word tonight. I'm believing for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe it too. I believe it too. I also believe I probably didn't make enough handouts tonight. Yep, that's right. Clap about it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's exciting. I couldn't be happier. Could not be happier. Could not be happier. While you get your handouts. This will be Be Not Deceived part Part number five. Check, check, check. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I know you can hear me, I'm good. Uh, but uh, we have one more lesson. And I'm, I'll, I'll let you know right now I won't be here next Wednesday. I'll be preaching in Illinois. And Brother David is going to minister, and he's going to do an incredible job. Uh, he always does. He always does. And uh, I'll never forget once I was gone and Brother David ministered and I came back and somebody told me, see if you can be gone a few, few more Wednesdays. See if you can be gone a little bit more. Brother David did such a good job. Just take some time off. And I said, well, okay, I can handle that. Only trouble is I, I enjoy this too much to, to give it up too much. But Brother David always does an incredible job. But then the following Wednesday um, will be our final uh, lesson in the Be Not Deceived series. We'll be in Galatians, the sixth chapter, and I'm going to challenge you right now to be here. Please be here because it's going to tie a whole lot of things together. Some revelation is going to flow and uh, ask for your prayers uh, because ever since we started the bait of Satan, uh, I, I was talking to one of my friends today on the phone, and I told him, and I may have even said it here, and then if I do, it's just the Spirit. If I repeat my stories and I repeat my points, it's just the Spirit of Brother Pete on me. <laughs> but uh, a lot of this stuff, I'm not naive, and I'm not sitting on a high place looking down it's way easier to preach than it is to live. But I'm happy to tell you the Lord's given me every opportunity to try to live it. And, uh, and the thing is, I'm happy to tell you we're still in the fight. Amen. We're still in the fight. And uh, um, we're going to go ahead and lay a little bit of groundwork. And uh, we'll get some more handouts. And I apologize for that. But... Uh, 
guess I need to start selling tickets. I told somebody, at, I told some of the ministers, how many of y'all ever noticed that between elements class and church, there's a premium on the bathrooms? Anybody ever notice that? Please don't be angry if you come here and find a slot to put your money in. Because I'm going to make them pay toilets. And we're going to build a new building from all of y'all people be going to the bathroom 15 times a service. And I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. But uh, uh, it, it ain't got nothing to do with being old. Matter of fact, it's mostly youngins that I see running back there to the bathroom. So, uh, And I, I can tell you right now, Marcus obviously is here more now, but when the boys was bad and still had to come to church, y'all know what I mean by that? They was living at home but being bad, but you still came to church. Uh, every time the Holy Ghost started moving, all three of my brothers, their stomach would get tore up. <laughs> and they'd be fighting over the bathroom in the back. And uh, so I know that rule. I know that game. I know that game, but the focus of tonight's lesson is a passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 33 and 34. And as was last week's focus package, package, passage, it's written to believers in the church at Corinth. And uh, that is so important for us to remember is to whom these passages are written. And uh, these are written to people that are in the church that are believers. And due to the constant barrage and pressures of an environment that's devoted to the worship of gods that cater to the pleasures and desires of the flesh, the faith of the Corinthian church has been weakened. They're constantly being hit and constantly being bombarded and, and constantly, come on, Holy Ghost, everything in the news and every newspaper and everybody you hear talking is a constant a attack against the stand that the church has taken on godly morals and values. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to move on. You don't have to even do anything. Just be a believer and somebody will come against you. Because the enemy knows to be intimidated by you even if they don't. Holy Ghost filled believers are still the biggest fear hell has. Oh, you hear me right now. There's a little old grandma somewhere that you don't know her name and you ain't never seen her and you ain't never listened to none of her messages on YouTube and you ain't never read none of her books. But I'm telling you right now, she's keeping the world turning. Because she's praying in the nighttime when we're asleep and when we're getting up in the morning, she's still praying and she's still fasting and she's still touching God. And there's a little old man that's doing the same thing. Trust me when I tell you, don't believe the reports that faith is going downhill because it ain't. It ain't. And these Corinthians were under attack. When faith is weak, everything weakens. The foundations you stand on are also weakened. And in this case, the enemy has found the Corinthian church to be susceptible to the idea that there is no resurrection. And if you doubt the re that there is a resurrection, then you can cast doubt on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead and you can cast doubt on the power of the Holy Ghost, which is the resurrection in the gospel, because the Bible says if the same spirit that brought Christ out of the grave dwell in you, it'll quicken your mortal body. So the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the power of the resurrection, and then uh, the ultimate resurrection on that hallelujah morning when all the dead in Christ shall rise. You remember that? I'll have a new body, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. It begins to put into doubt that, that there's a heaven to gain and ultimately you begin to question everything you believe in if there's no resurrection. Okay. 
Paul begins this section by establishing the power of the resurrection. Important, important note. This is simply done by Paul reminding them of what has happened in their life. That's why it is so important to have a salvation experience like they preach in the Bible. Because if you just make a statement of faith or you just sign a card or you just do any other small act that testifies to your salvation, when the enemy comes against you, that means nothing. But if you have stood under the unction from heaven and felt the windows of heaven open up and you have felt the power of God start in your toes and rise up until it explodes out of your mouth in a language that you ain't never spoke, you can tell the devil, wait a minute, stupid. You might be winning right now. And you might be making me doubt and you might be making me afraid. But I can take you back to that spot and you can't change what happened to me right there when I was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There was a witness of the Holy Ghost in my life. Paul said, I preach to you the gospel. You receive the gospel and you still stand in the gospel. The death, the burial, resurrection. He reminds them that the gospel is the instrument by which they are in the process of being saved. The gospel is the instrument by which they are in the process of being saved. You and I haven't made it yet, but we're in the process, okay? The, pro the salvation process is in line with the power of the resurrection. You'll like this, Miss Jane. He says, if they continue in what you've heard, and they continue in living what they heard Paul preach. And the picture that I see is a circle or a wheel, if you please. It starts with the preaching of the word. It continues with the preaching of the word. And it's going to be complete with the preaching of the word. None of, hear me now, none of which is any effect without obedience to the preached word. I said this a couple of weeks ago. You don't get saved by osmosis. You can't just sit here and hear enough preaching until you get saved. Got to put some action to it. Faith without works is dead. Okay. Paul clearly declares that his position as apostle, as missionary, uh, ministering salvation unto them, preaching, all the different aspects, salvation, ministry, preaching, missions, etc. He said, I'm not doing all this because of me. I didn't earn it. I'm not getting a special prize. Everything I am is by the grace of God. Everything. And then he just as clearly says, and I put big stars beside this because I want you to hear it. He just as clearly says in verse number 11, that it is the message you hear that saves you, not the messenger. Case in point, if need be, if you and I need saving and there ain't a preacher, he preached to you through a donkey. That don't mean the donkey's going to heaven, but that means we've got to hear that word, and it means that much to the Lord. Okay? Think about the one of the biggest problems of the Corinthian church. Was y'all here last week? Yeah, a bunch of you was. What was one of the main problems of the Corinthian church? When they said, I'm of Paul, and I'm of Apollos, and I'm of Christ. What was that meaning? Competition. Factions. They got these little, these little groups going on, and they begin to compete on one another, and it ain't even really so much about them winning as it is about you losing. Okay, and so what Paul is doing is saying, you know what, you can say you came up under Paul, you can say you came up under Apollos, and you can even say you came up under Jesus Christ, but none of them by themselves save you. It's your obedience to the message they've preached that saves you. Yeah, that still doesn't go over incredibly well, but in, I believe it was Acts chapter number 3, Acts chapter number 4, when, when uh, Peter told them he gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him, they tried to kill him. Because, Brother Bucky, that goes against the nature. 
But I'm happy to tell you that's what the Holy Ghost is doing is transforming your nature and my nature. With the power of the resurrection, he's telling them, you know, I came preaching the death, burial, and resurrection. You're standing in the death, burial, and resurrection. It's going to be the death, burial, and resurrection. Past, present, and future salvation depends upon the death, the burial, and resurrection. I am, Brother David, it's not just who he is, it's what he did. Oh, now, the Bible says, listen, there's not another sacrifice for sin. There's only one. And he entered into one time. Woo! He entered in one time behind the veil. And the Bible said he is the propitiation for our sins, but not of our sins only, but of the sins of the whole world. Hear me when I tell you there was enough blood shed on Calvary to forgive every human being who will ever live. With the evidence of the power of the resurrection so prevalent in their lives, in the message, Paul has just brought it to the surface, what has happened in their lives. Now he begins to address this philosophy that's saying there is no resurrection. Now, this is the reason for Paul's exposition concerning the resurrection and the past, present, future effects. If there is no resurrection, then why do we even preach a message? Why is there a different life to live if there's no message of the resurrection? Why is there a mission? Let them all fend for themselves. Why go to church? Why have a relation? Why pursue, or excuse me, rather than pursue a relationship with Jesus Christ, here's what we do. Let's eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow we're dying. Find that in Ecclesiastes and also later in this chapter. Because that's all there is if there was no resurrection. And there is no hope, period, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here's the truth. If it was left up to the first Adam, this is true. But God did not leave it up to Adam. He came himself. Remember Brother Cody? He was in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It was with the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that he came to give us hope. Now hear me when I tell you this. And the Bible says, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. You know what that means to the apostle Paul? Don't you be messing with the resurrection. Oh, I wish you'd hear me. Don't you be messing with the resurrection. Because Job said, hey, the, flesh, the worms may eat my flesh, but I'm going to know him. My Redeemer liveth. Paul said, the, the, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. They better leave the resurrection alone because it is the final say. The power of the Holy Ghost. Any effort to diminish, pervert, or completely destroy the truth of the resurrection, whether it be that of Jesus Christ, that of the Holy Ghost experience, or of the final resurrection at the last trump of God, is to take away the hope that Jesus paid the price for. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, right now, I'm calling us in the middle of a Bible study. I'm calling us to receive a renewed burden to pray for one another, to pray for our towns and our cities, our counties and the world. Here's what you pray, that their faith fail not. Can't give up your faith. Now, it has a little bit different context, but it has the same principle. Jude said in the last of the epistles, he said, when I consider diligently what I ought to write to you, it came to me to tell you to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered the saints. 
That word once means once and for all. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, above all, through all, and in you all, the power of the resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 says, Be not deceived. That's what brought it to this series. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now last week we discussed the life, the behaviors, and the immoral climate of the city of Corinth. You remember that I told you they became a byword. To live like a Corinthian meant somebody didn't have any kind of morals. They had no morals, no moral compass. They lived by no standards. They just lived free as they wanted to, to live like a Corinthian. Now, not only is their attack upon their morals that they have to withstand, but now an attack upon their doctrine. Now, these two go hand in hand because the doctrine of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection is inextricably connected to the doctrine of holiness. You don't have the resurrection without holiness. Don't be afraid of that word. You better fall in love with it. Better figure it out because the Bible says without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. It matters. Okay, it matters. Holiness. And it's way more than what you wear and what you watch and what you listen to. But that matters too. Yeah, Why you got to be going off into that? We was going so good. The way of holiness and the doctrine of Jesus Christ, I want you to hear me right now, is always going to conflict with the way of the world. Always. Always. And the way of the world is always going to be a life lived or to live a life ruled by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The deception is, be not deceived, the deception is, is that they think they can be, that they can continue to be inundated with those irreverent thoughts and actions and not be affected by it. It is deception to think you can continue to dilly-dally around with the world and not be affected by it. Absolutely. Can I say that one more time? The deception is that they can continue to be inundated with the irreverent thoughts and actions of the world in which they live and not be affected by it. That is deception. Holy Ghost is calling us to a higher commitment, folks, not a weaker one. And he's calling us to be more like him and less like the world. Don't be surprised if you, don't, you and I don't have some rich young ruler type encounters with the Lord over the next few weeks. Don't be surprised. Because it is not Scripture. That if you have money to sell everything you have and give it to the poor to be saved. But it was for him. We're going to win a world that's never been before. We're fighting battles we've never fought before. But we have a God that is fully prepared for it. But we can't be deceived into thinking that you can wear what you want, watch what you want, eat what you want, drink what you want, listen to what you want, be around whomever you want, go wherever you want, say whatever you want, and not be affected by it to the point of being lost. 
it is deception. Am I doing all right? Okay. Be not deceived. That's the first three words. It means be sober or be vigilant. Be aware. Know this, the enemy is after you. He's after your faith. He's after your doctrine. He's after your morals. He wants to destroy you. Know it. Know it. And deception is the airplane he flies into your life on. Be not deceived. Be aware. Oh, I'm fixing to wade into that just a little bit. Not yet, but I'm going to wade into it. And it's going to fit the recovery community. But you remember I told us Sunday, we all in the recovery community. He said, be not deceived. Evil, the next word. It means evil in the widest sense. There's no exceptions. There's no generalities. It means depraved. Are you ready for this? Injurious. Does anybody know what that means? Wants to injure you, cause you problems, cause you difficulties. And the enemy, the thief, cometh not but far to steal, kill, and destroy. So now we have a connection, and the Bible calls him the evil one. All right? So be not deceived. Let me just say this. I feel this real heavy, so I'm just going to say it. You can't be watching TV shows and movies that have all kinds of ungodliness that the Bible teaches against and believe that it ain't affecting you. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Evil in the widest sense. There are no exceptions to it. There are no generalities. In the broadest sense, evil that is designed to injure you. Man, I feel like there's something bubbling right here. Let me just move on a minute because this next one's going to throw us. Be not deceived. Evil communications. Now, if on the surface, if I ask you what did that mean, you would say a conversation with somebody or words or with our keyboard or texting with our phone. That's the world we live in now. That's not exactly what it means, though that isn't conclu- included. Here's a word. Now, for all of you that, that afraid I'm going to talk nasty in church, this ain't a nasty word. It's what it means. Intercourse. That's what communications means in its literal sense, intercourse. Now, here's what that means. Are you ready for it? Because we, we want our mind to be in the gutter and think, oh, man, I ain't guilty of that. Here's what you got. This is what that word intercourse means. Had no idea. The exchange of thoughts and feelings. Now, I'm just going to throw this out there. Do you know when you pow, pop up Facebook or TikTok or Snapchat or Twitter and just go to, you are without prejudice giving everybody on there access to your mind. Oh, I'm going to stay here a minute. Exchanging of thoughts and feelings. This intercourse concept is referring to intimate relationships. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of Simbus. That's saving your marriage before it starts. My, my uh, premarital curriculum that I'm trying to get through with people. 
There's a difference in passion and intimacy. Passion is what's happening in the bedroom most of the time. Intimacy is the exchanging of thoughts and feelings. Now you and I need to ask ourselves based upon this, how many people have I given intimate access to my mind? And it includes, I'm still using the actual definition, it includes conversation, association, and companionship. Be not deceived. Evil exchanging of thoughts and feelings, conversation, association, and companionship. Several years ago, my dad preached a message, and I, I, have the, I have the notes to it in my office in his Bible. And he told the story of living near the river. And it's got a lot application also, Brother David. But daddy told the story of living near the river and being a little boy. And grandma said, can you guess what she said? Amen. Don't touch that river. Don't go near the river. Stay away from the river. He decided, because we know better, to just go look at it. Just go over there and look at it. And then, Brother David, he said it was hot outside. So he rolled up his breeches legs and took his shoes and socks off and sat down on the bank and started dabbling his feet in the water. And before the water got done with him, it had called him to be in it. The title of the message was Devil Dabbling. And the truth of the matter is, be not deceived. If you start listening to the devil's music, you'll find yourself going home with him. Be not deceived. Exactly how much of the world do we think we can allow into our life all willy-nilly and still be all right? This is what you call Pentecost Bible study. Oh, don't worry, I'm going to. Be not deceived. Evil intercourse, the exchange of thoughts and feelings, intimacy, intimate relationships, allowing ungodliness in your head and in your mind. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt. Here's what it means. Spoil, destroy, ruin. I like all of them, but then it really started getting right. Shrivel or wither. Spoil or ruin. And I took the commentaries and the dictionaries and I came up with this conclusion. To take from excellent and useful and make it detestable and worthless. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt. Well, we're gonna get we're gonna get here in just a minute. Y'all be y'all be surprised to know I was afraid I wasn't gonna have enough Bible study to fill up the time. Look at here. You were doing all right, Sarah, until you said that. She said, I think we knew better. 
Yeah, there you go, Brother Shannon. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 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 Looking, looking at the weeds and the toxins in the world, the pressure and the toxins, mm -hmm. um, it's been born from that. But for me to actually become aware and know that the conversation that's going on that's inside my head when that's happening mm -hmm. is, is astonishing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, here's the connection I'm going to make. And then let me tell you this. We're fixing to go there in a big way. Okay? But what's happening is if I'm having that problem in my mind with them uncontrollable thoughts and stuff, I feed that by what I'm watching, what I'm listening to, what I allow into my head. I'm feeding that, and I'm never going to get the victory over it. Right. Like, right. Continue. Make sense? Yeah, see, they're, they're Absolutely. I'm nurturing that which is destroying me. Yeah. Now, Now, before I go any further, I want to let you know the Bible says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. So don't be thinking it's all doom and gloom and we're all losers. The Bible said we got the Holy Ghost so we can overcome. What the, what the Word of God is telling us is you can't give in to your, you can't give your flesh an inch. To shrivel, to wither, to take from excellent and useful to detestable and worthless. That doesn't mean God can't turn you around. But you're in a dangerous place when you start slipping off and being God. Because that's what's happened. Okay. Here we go. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good Well, you think this is going to tie into Sunday's message? I remember what I preached Sunday. I want to come down there and walk around, but then I'll forget what's on my notes here. So you're probably thankful for that. Good means useful, gentle, pleasant, and kind. But the definition, this ought to really excite you to think this is what the devil is trying to do to me. Look what this word is. The original Greek word for good in this setting, you know what it means? Employable. It means, woo that the Holy Ghost has got me in training to go to work for the kingdom of God. And the devil is trying to make me unemployable to God. Let me tell you something, Brother Cody Pikey. You know what the first thing he'll tell you when you mess up about that far? You know what the devil tells you? He doesn't tell you, oh, it'll be all right, the Lord will forgive you. He doesn't tell you the Lord is graceful and merciful. You mess up and get about that far off track, you know what the devil will tell you? You're done. Because that's his mission, is to get you to think that you are unemployable. And you can't be made to think, listen, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong right now. You can't be made to think you're unemployable unless the devil knows what the God has got in store for you. Well, I wish everybody under the sound of my voice would hear that right now. You matter to the kingdom. We're better because you're here. I don't care who you are, how long you've been here. You belong here. You matter here. Your gifts and your calling are without repentance. Be encouraged, not discouraged. But be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt. Good 
Here we go, Brother Ronnie. We're getting started in it. Manners. The word that we use that would better be a better translation is character. And the definition is habit, manner, customs, or morals. But here's the big definition that I love. Moral habits. Evil communication will change you. It'll change you. Corrupting, employable, moral habits. Now, let's look at this antidote. Everybody with me? Be not deceived. And if you think this don't tie together with elements, class, and boundaries, it does. Don't want to miss that Sunday morning. We're going to wade off into it again. But here's the antidote. He said, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Please hear me as I tell you this right now. Don't think you can beat the devil at his game. Please don't think that. Don't think that you're going to be able to keep listening to, watching, hanging out with, and being around, and being influenced by what you've been doing it, and be okay. Not happening. Okay. Now, verse 34. Here's the antidote, if you please. That's not a good word, but it's the best one I could come up with. He says, here we go, Brother Ronnie, I promised you. Awake to righteousness. I looked up awake. Here's what it means. To awake out of drunkenness and return to sobriety. So you know what that means, Brother Shannon? That means people that, I'm about to get in trouble, I'm just telling you. I'm probably going to need some of you fellas. Marcus, be ready to stand by. Because <laughs> if we was all four here, we'd need about 100 to balance it out. This tells me that the effect of ungodliness on a holy person offers the same thing as the use of drugs. And people that would never put a pipe in their mouth, people that never would wrap their lips around a bottle of Budweiser, that never would dream of even standing in the street with somebody sticking a needle in their arm, will subject themselves to the same thing by continuing to cater to ungodliness. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Now, I'm, I'm going to be just a little real. People sitting up in their ivory tower talking about how holy they are and how godly they are and constantly allowing. Say, well, that's not bothering me. Tell that to the book. The book says, whoo, holy ghost, my God, evil communication corrupts good manners. Y'all feel that? There's anointing in this house right now. There's a powerful anointing in this place right now. So in the context of this lesson, this is written to believers. This is not, and all due respect, this is not the big book. This is the Bible written to the church, to believers. And the Lord don't waste his time. If he writing this to believers, believers need to hear it. Now I want you to hear me right now. And, and I ask you to forgive me. 
Okay? I'm asking you to forgive me for making light of it. But there's been more than one. Matter of fact, there's been a bunch of times. Like to the point of when is this going to stop? That some of the most holy people in this church have shared things on their Facebook page with nasty pictures in it, with cuss words in it, and things that are ungodly and unholy in it. And didn't even notice it. You know what the book calls that? Drunk. Is that all right? Make sense? Man alive. You would never dream of doing that. That's what the enemy does to you. I've got another message daddy preached for me one time. He didn't preach it for me, but he preached it somewhere. Don't wake up dead on your ivory bed. Don't wake up and realize, oh, hold on. I feel it, Brother David. You know, whoo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, old Samson, the first time uh, he rose up, he shook himself uh, and he whooped the Philistines. Uh, and then he got a little closer and he got a little closer until he told that girl, cut my hair and I'll be like everybody else. But he didn't believe it, Brother David, because he got up from his haircut, Brother Ronnie, and he shook himself as at other times. And he did not know the Lord had departed from him. That's what I'm preaching to you tonight. I'm preaching to us. Please forgive me. I'm preaching to us. I fought hell all day long since I first woke up at 5.30 this morning. He said, awake to righteousness. This has got a very simple definition, but I love it. Am I doing all right tonight? Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Brother David, if I've ever heard from God on a series of Bible studies, this was it. If I ever heard from God. Here's what righteousness means. That, oh God. That which is approved by God. Oh, Lord. That which is approved by God. That's the definition. Come out of drunkenness and return to righteousness. So the intoxicating factor is to be deluded, deceived, and distracted by that which is approved by Antichrist rather than by God, which is the lust of the flesh, which the New Living Translation says, the craving for physical pleasure. Lust of the eye, which is the craving for everything we see, and the pride of life, which is pride in our achievements and our possessions. The Bible clearly says that jumps not of God. Antichrist, I, I, I was blown away when I read this. Antichrist has two meanings. It literally means against Christ or, this one scares me, instead of Christ. So it's referring to either an enemy of Christ or a usurper of Christ's name and rights. And the next phrase further elaborates what the indicators of drunken behavior are. And he says, awake to righteousness and sin not. Why would he tell him to not sin? Why would he tell him, Brother Cody Pipkin, this time, I done been talking to the muscle man the other times. Why would he tell him, come out of your drunken stupor, 
the intoxication of the world. Y'all think there ain't one? Why do you think if anybody in here got Yahoo as one of their home pages? Why do you think about every fourth block on there is talking about some movie star in her bikini? President debate. Lucille Ball in a G string. <laughs> I said that to be funny because I didn't want to call out him. Really? Why, why is that, Brother David? Because it's, it's intoxicating. And before you know it, you'll be looking to find out what's happening with the president, but you'll be clicking on Lucille. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that one's any worse than the other. Well, that, that may be true, but, <laughs> but my point is, my, well, that may be true, but my point is, my point is, if we, we can be looking at for something legitimate, okay, and but because here's the truth, is you can click on the news, you click on politics, you click on anything and get intoxicated. Be wanting to fight. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I wasn't trying to be funny. Yeah. I'm just saying that, that even today, you know, one of one of my coworkers said, you know, turn off the national news because it's it's a it's taking the bait. It is, it is for sure. You're exactly right. You're right. But but in the context of what I was saying, it's the seduction of the world. But I think there's probably a connection that we feel like that we can get in a fight with Joe the truck driver out behind the warehouse, and if I beat him up, that means everything's going to change on the politics. Okay. He said, and stop sinning. The solution for sin is only one. You know what it is? Repent. Repent. Repent, which means be sorry for what you've done and stop doing it. And what? Oh, well, I, now wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. I ain't giving you this one. It's too easy. Come out of your drunken stupor. To righteousness, which is defined as that which is approved by God. So true repentance means I ask forgiveness, I forsake wrongdoing, and start doing right. It's a threefold process. Get rid of the old and grab a hold of the new. It's a turnaround. Okay, and then what is right? I was hoping you would ask because you're thinking, well, don't drink, don't cuss, don't chew, and don't go with the girls that do. <laughs> no. Look what he says. Hang with me just a minute. He says, next verse, 35, no, Oh, it's in 34. My bad. I gave you everything you needed. You knew I didn't mess up. <laughs> Awake to righteousness, meaning shake yourself to know what is approved by God. And how do you find that out? Come to Bible study and we'll learn it together. Look here. For some have not the knowledge of God. What does that mean? Straighten up. Live right. And go to work. He said the reason Holy Ghost help me right now. Man, I wish y'all could feel what I'm feeling. He said the problem is God doesn't just want you to be good. He wants you to be good and do right because he's got a work for you to do. That's been the disconnect in the apostolic church for so long is because we believed. Remember, I preached this one. We believed we could show up and get our pen. 
and we were good. No. He said, there's a reason. Oh, I feel Jesus so strong in this place right now. And I'm so thankful for it. So thankful. He said, the reason why we've got to get right is there's some people among you that don't know who he is. Some are ignorant of both the power of the resurrection and knowing the difference between the expression of a godly life versus a worldly life. They don't know. And God have mercy on us. If we sit there with our little beady holiness binoculars on and talk down to people and make fun of people and ridicule people and talk about how nasty they are when you haven't told them about Jesus. Rather than influencing their world with the knowledge of God. Because he did say, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Rather than influencing with the knowledge of God, they've allowed themselves to be influenced by those people and things around them. I believe that's what Jesus meant when he said, remember Lot's wife. And I also think that's what Paul meant when he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then he said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What was happening to the Corinthian church is they were being conformed to the world rather than being transformed. Because that's what we was thinking. Well, I don't know if I can do that, and I don't know if I can do that, and I don't know if I can do that. Baby, you get transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost, and you'd be surprised what you can do. Now, in their life, the call from Jesus Christ, Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, Acts chapter number 1, all of them, before he left, he said, you go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In Matthew 28, he said, teach them the truth and teach them how to live. That's what he says. He says it two times. Look it up. That's in follow the lead, by the way. Something I told Brother Ronnie and Sister Miss Jane about today. Then he says, look. Jesus' call to go has been ignored. And now an apathetic church has given way to a passionate world. And then he says, I speak this to your shame. Now, this is very unusual for Paul to say. Sister Dana, he usually tempers everything he says and tries to make it encouraging. He softens it. He does not just shell down the corn and throw the cob at him. But he does right here. And here's why. He's very intentional about being straight with them. <coughs> to become intoxicated by the possibility of feeding our flesh without any limits at the risk of allowing the doctrine of the resurrection and the doctrine of holiness to be maligned and then discarded is unacceptable. And that's why he doesn't pull any punches. Because Brother Shannon, he wants them to know this ain't a suggestion. This is not advice. It's a law. And if we continue to dance with the devil, we will become his wife. Because 
You, you open the door, and I'm going to keep coming back there. The Bible first said, Lot chose the well-watered plain of Jordan. Instead of deferring to his elder and showing respect, he grabbed what was his. Second, he pitched his tents towards Sodom. And the next time we see him, he's got a prime time place at the gate of Sodom, and he has become a ruler in a place destined for judgment. But here's the thing. I'm going to bring this full circle, and then I'm done. It's not even as if they willfully sold off what they believed. But they were deceived. The intoxicating allure of the world blinds us to the delivering power of truth. Be not deceived. Stand with me. The call away from deception is not so that the Lord can get his way by making you do what he wants you to. It's so cause, so the Lord can loose us into what he has for us. God, we love you tonight. Your word is really, really quick. Powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Divides asunder the joints and the marrow and the bones and the sinew. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I pray, God, that revelation is loosed in this house. I pray, Lord, that there are people that leave here, but they don't leave the word. I pray, God, that you, if necessary, keep us awake tonight. If necessary, Draw us to our knees tonight. If necessary, let us make changes tonight. And with a repentant heart. God, forgive us for every idle, stupid word we've ever said. When we talked about people and we criticized folks that were just trying to do the best they knew how. And while we sat by quietly and didn't tell anybody what to do and anything about you, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for thinking we've made it, and we thank you for reminding us we're still in the process. I pray, God, that your word will go forth tonight and not return void. Your word says that's the way it happens, but it'll do that which it was intended to do. I pray that we receive it, let it fall on good ground, and let this Bible study not soon leave us. Thank you for this precious group of people that you've allowed me to pastor, and I'm thankful for this word you've given us and you haven't given it to us, Lord, as a, as a rod of correction, Lord, but as a staff of direction, as a poke of direction, Lord, a, a, a push in the right direction. God, bringing us into alignment, bringing us into order, bringing us into order, God. You're preparing a bride. You're preparing a bride, God, for your return. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for your word. Thankful for your grace and mercy you've shown us. You're long-suffering to us work because you're not willing that any perish, but that all would come to repentance. I'm thankful for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Be safe this weekend. Uh, Sunday morning at 10 is Elements class. Sunday morning at 11 is worship. Look forward to seeing you there. Next Wednesday, y'all come. Support Brother David as he brings the word. It will be powerful, it will be effective, and it will be good. We'll see you. God bless you. You're dismissed.